Ohio gozaimasu. Good morning, everybody. Today I wanted to share with you some of the Japanese breakfast foods that I make in the morning. As you already know, I am not known to be a morning person. I'm not saying that I'm cranky or mean. I just don't embrace the morning as、uh, openly as a lot of people do. And I'm sure a lot of you guys also don't embrace the mornings with a lot of open arms. Because of that, I find that having a little breakfast meal or something that I try to make, like a little goal, Kind of gets me through the, the rough stage of waking up. So, I wanted to share with you kind of like a typical Japanese breakfast that I would make. The first thing we're gonna do, get our rice on. No rice, no life. I have this absolutely amazing little rice washing device. It's so silly, I always wanted one. It just clips into your rice steaming bowl. And when you're washing the rice, well, you'll see what it does. It's totally epic. I'm gonna be going for one cup of rice, which is what I normally do. If there's any leftovers, you can make onigiri or you can roll it up into some plastic and like keep it in the fridge for later on. All right, we're going in. I remember the first time I made rice and I didn't wash it, and I think I was making kimbap. And everybody was like, Oh my god, you haven't washed your rice, you're gonna die! And I had no idea what the purpose of washing your rice is, but basically it's a little bit dusty because it's just been milled, and so it's just got some kind of dust on the outside of it, maybe some pebbles and dirt, which I personally have never seen, and it's starchy. So you're trying to get rid of that、um, starchy outside layer. Just give it like a little bit of a swirl, and then watch this magic, you guys. It keeps my rice from falling out. So, I'm gonna rinse my rice about three times until the water is looking pretty clear. I know some people go hardcore until it's like super clear, but for me, it's like if it's a little bit starchy, it doesn't really bother me. It just makes it a little bit stickier, a little bit kind of crispier on the edges sometimes. Now, the sorcery part, getting it exactly to that one line. It's gotta be, it's gotta be even flush. Even like a little bit over the line, it ends up becoming like too mushy and a little bit under, it's like a little undercooked. Well, I'll take a little bit off. Thank you, handy dandy little guy. In we go. I'm going to be making one of my favorite Japanese side dishes. It's blanched spinach, or blanched, however you say it. And you add miso and ground sesame seeds, and it kind of has like a nutty and sweet and savory taste to it. It is so good and it's really easy to make. So, what's interesting is that you keep on the bottoms when you're cooking them. We're kind of just like blanching them in the water for 90 seconds to give them a good cook. Then we chill them really fast and then we dip them in the sauce. So, you don't want to cut them off or they kind of just float everywhere and you've got to kind of figure out how to strain them. So, it's actually pretty convenient just to leave on the bottoms. I don't remember if spinach in North America is sold like this or not, or if the bottom. It's been cut off. My brain is so old. Let's pop on a pot of hot water and get started on making the sauce. So, while the water's coming to a boil, let's make the sauce that we need for the spinach. You are going to need cooking sake, and mirin, and soy sauce. We're going to need a little tiny bit of sugar. And of course, you're going to need miso paste. Additionally, you will need toasted sesame seeds. If you do not have this in the ingredients, then you're just gonna be making miso covered spinach, which I don't know, maybe that'll turn out okay. But it's pretty critical to have these toasted sesame seeds to get that kind of nutty flavor that you want. This is a tiny little pestle and mortar that I have for grinding up the sesame seeds. I got this from Daiso. Can you believe it? It was so cheap. You wanna hear something else amazing? This is called a suribachi. And a sooty kogi. A kogi! I don't know why. Maybe I should draw like two little cute little noses on it and so it can kind of be like a constant little kogi crusher and he'll be like, wee, 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 wee. So, I'm gonna be doing a tablespoon of sake in a microwavable bowl. I'm gonna microwave it for like 45 seconds or a minute just to burn off some of that alcohol taste. To the microwave. Well, that's microwaving, let's start grinding up our sesame seeds. It's such a satisfying thing to do because they're so little. Two tablespoons of sesame seeds. 
Oh yeah. And we're just gonna give them a little bit of a grind up. We're not trying to make like a paste, but we're trying to bring out some of the natural oils. It is so satisfying. Let me just tell you, can you guys hear the sound? It's the most amazing sound. This is when I'd have an assistant, if this was a cooking show, and I'd be like, assistant, do all the things for me in advance. I'd like you to measure everything out into tiny bowls and have them on the table. So I just go, add a tablespoon of sake, add a tablespoon of this and that, and these and those. And it's like, it's so easy. But they never show you all the measuring parts and the parts that actually take time. Nope, here I am, grinding my own sesame seeds. It really does smell good though. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this in a video before, but like I petition for sesame seeds to be part to the, added to the, like the taste pyramid. You know how we're like sweet, salty, spicy, savory. I think sesame needs to be in there. Already starts with an S, so it already sounds pretty good. Uh, and I think that that nutty sesame taste is so unique. I know we got like peanuts and peanut butter and stuff, but like sesame has like sesame oil and you just use it for so many different things and it changes everything. Oh my God, it smells so good. Ah, that's the smell I make when things smell good, you guys. It smells really nice. So it's starting to get that really like powdery up here, a little bit powdery. And so I'm gonna leave it at this. I might grind it a little bit longer, but I kind of like having a little bit of texture of these seeds. Okay, water has almost come to a boil. I'm just gonna turn it off. And let's finish up our sauce. Ooh, that is some steamy sake. So we've already got the sake in here. We're gonna add in a tablespoon of mirin. Helen Mirin going in. Is she an award winner? I think she is, right? An award winning something. Helen Mirin. We're adding in a few drops of soy sauce. We just want like a little bit of a salty kick, but not like tons. You're gonna get that from the miso. I'm scared. That's it. I feel like an evil witch from Snow White. While it is still a bit warm, I'm gonna add in the sugar. This is optional. Not everybody likes to have that sweet and savoriness to it, but I've made a couple recipes where I left the sugar out and it was just like a little bit too salty. I do about like half a teaspoon, but really just kind of like a pinch of sugar. When the sake is still warm, it helps the sugar dissolve quite nicely. Go. This goes into your bag of sugar to keep it from hardening. It absorbs moisture, but it's also a measuring spoon. Brilliant. And where do you think I got it from? Starts with a D, ends with an I, so. Gonna give it a little bit of a whisk together. Sugar is almost dissolved. Nice. I'm gonna add in the miso, and this part you have to be careful with. You want one to two tablespoons of miso, but it specifically depends on the kind of miso you're using. If your miso is super salty, two tablespoons is too much. So I always start with one and then I kind of add more later on. This is like the base part. So this is like the hard work done. We just need to measure out the miso in the right amount. All right, starting with one tablespoon about, and then we'll add more if we need to. This is kind of like a medium saltiness to sweetness type of miso. I have another one that's quite, um, quite, quite, quite salty. And that one is better for like soups and other savory things. But uh, for now, I think that like the spinach goes really well with this kind of medium sweet. You really wanna look for color. If the miso is a lighter color, then it's gonna be sweeter. If it's a darker color, it's gonna be more savory. That's basically worked really well for me. A little more, a little more is needed. Oh yeah, I can see little like chunky bumps and stuff that makes me feel, mm-hmm, woo, mm. yummy. Now to add in our sesame seeds, which I am still casually playing with because it kind of feels like bubble wrap. I don't know how to explain it. Maybe for you guys, this is like the worst azure on the planet, but it's really great. Dub them all in. <sighs> but 
beautiful. Look at how lovely and chunky this looks. It looks like I just made peanut butter or like sesame butter. All right, this is all soft and ready to go. We are going to now blanche our spinach and it's a two workstation situation. You've got the hot water that you're gonna dip it into and then when you're done, you're gonna pop it into some cold water in your bath is what I was gonna say. Probably not your bath, probably your sink but I guess you could if you're a weirdo. But yeah, we're gonna put it into a, a cold ice bath. That's what I was trying to say. And that will stop the cooking process because otherwise the spinach will like just disintegrate. Then we're gonna give it a squeeze out and coat it off with the dressing. Get your heat proof pinchy pinchies, or whatever they're called. I'm also gonna make sure that I have my cold water bath ready to go. I've been running the tap a bit to get it cold. We're about to dunk these bad boys for 60 to 90 seconds. All right, buddies, time for your bath. We're going to leaf head down. I'll take a bath. Oh no, Sean Paul, my my honorary Canadian, Sean Paul. I don't know why that came into my head for Sean Paul, but I think it was like, they take a bath. They take a bath. Sean Paul, honorary Canadian. Oh, by the way, I recently looked up information on Sean Paul being an honorary Canadian, and it turns out that I am not totally insane. His grandparents moved to Mississauga or something, which is like around the corner of Etobicoke where I grew up. So he did visit Canada and that's where I got the crazy idea. And apparently people thought he was Canadian. So it's not just me. I'm not crazy. You see? Okay. In my opinion, these are, these are done. It was only a minute, 60 seconds, but I don't want this to go any further. They're looking like they're going to fall apart otherwise. All right. Smash them in that cold bath, you guys. In the great words of Honor Schwarzenegger, chill out. Name that movie. So what I'm looking for is to make sure that as I touch them, I'm not feeling like tons and tons of warmth. They're feeling like they're, they're pretty cool. Cold water also helps bring a little bit of life back into your vegetables. So if you have like a really wilty spinach in your fridge, you can pop it in a bath of cold water and it'll come a bit back to life. We're gonna give the seaweed, the seaweed. It certainly looks like seaweed. Blah, 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 blah. We're gonna give the spinach a bit of a squeeze out to get rid of that excess water. I'm gonna give a good squeeze at the beginning for the boiled water. And then at the end, there's gonna be some kind of green spinach water. And I'm gonna add just a squirt of that spinach water into the miso paste stuff, just to give it a little bit of liquid. You don't have to, optional, but I like to do that. I'm not trying to like murder it, but we don't want it to be super wet. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit of this into here. Yeah, so attractive. Next up, we're gonna cut these little ends off and then slice them into one, two, three even pieces and then toss them in the sauce and voila. I'm sure someone's gonna be like, don't throw those away, they're good for some home remedy. And I'm like, yeah, maybe. They're being tossed. And boom, let me take these nice, neat little piles of spinach and we're going to pepper them into this. Do, 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 like so, and give them a mix, and then we're gonna pop them in the fridge and let them just kind of chill out. Chill out. Don't be too violent with your tossing of these. They have been cooked, so just a little bit of gentle love. Okay, that feels good. An important part is making sure that you lick the spoon. Mmm, mmm, ooh, mmm, yummy, so nutty and magical. I don't even want to wait for breakfast. I'm just gonna like, wah, 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 as I'm cooking things. All right, side dish done. Rice is bubbling away. 
Let's move on to the next part of this delicious breakfast meal. On to the miso soup. This is something I am so comfortable making now. I make it just so much. It just, it just rolls out of my mind. So the night before I tend to soak my dashi as in my soup stock in advance because it's just so easy. So this looks like plain old normal water, but I actually dropped in a piece of kombu and I let it expand in there for about four hours before I took it out. So it's actually seaweed water. Inside of the seaweed water, I'm going to be adding a little dashi tea bag. It's the ones that always smell ridiculously fishy and make your entire house smell like a nightmare. Inside of it, they've got little tiny bits of fish. They'll have a bonito, that's the dried katsuobushi that they shave off. It's gonna have maybe um, shrimp shells or mushrooms, whatever it is that you bought, it'll have different kinds of flavoring in it. And you're soaking that in the hot water to get that kind of base flavoring. You can buy them in bulk in like a giant bag. And then I just keep them inside of an airtight sealed container. So I measure out my dashi broth by using the bowls that I'm actually going to be eating from. A lot of recipes will say like two cups, four cups, but I find it easier just to literally be like one cup, two cup, like that way you'll have enough or not enough. I'm probably gonna do maybe two or three of these because if I have leftover soup, I can use it to put udon noodles in or make like a little miso ramen later on. So who cares? To the stove top. All right, one cup of seaweed water. Two cups of seaweed water. And maybe a little more for luck. How much do I have left? I'm gonna add a little bit more and then I'm gonna save it because dashi will last for a couple of days in your fridge or you can just put it in the freezer. So I always have these kind of like seaweed water ready to go. Oh, what's that? My rice is ready. Take out a fishy tea bag filled with fishy tea bag magic. Oh yeah. Gore, damn it, EDS. Ugh. Toss it inside your pot and you're gonna put your pot onto boil. Now you don't actually want this to come to a boil. If it comes to a really big rolling boil, you're gonna get kind of weird, foamy, slimy stuff happening. So bring it to a boil and then I just kill the heat. Go fishy fishy, brew. You can add anything you want to miso soup. You can do potatoes, onions. Sometimes I do just like whatever root veg is in the house, but traditionally I enjoy putting in some soft tofu, green onions, and today I have something extra special to add that I only just recently found at the grocery store and I can't wait to see how it turns out, but I'm not gonna tell you about it. It's right here. Whoop, whoop. You'll see. It's magic. Yes, this apron has pockets. So I'm just gonna drain some of the water off this tofu and cut it into cubes. And this is my amazing green onion container. I've already pre-chopped my green onions and put them in here. And it has this little tiny draining tray at the bottom so that as it gets moist, ugh, moist, the water gathers at the bottom and it keeps them from rotting super, super quickly. Isn't that an amazing invention? What's that, Martina? Where did you get it from? I don't know. What kind of a place could I possibly, it's from Daiso. That's where it's from, it's from Daiso. Now in a controversial action, most people warm up their tofu inside their miso soup, but I don't like doing that because I find it completely destroys them. So instead I cut them into cubes and I add them to my bowl and then I add the miso soup to my tofu. Yes, maybe it's a little bit uh, cold, but it will warm up naturally as I'm puttering around doing anything else anyways. Doing anything else and doing other things anyways. I need this food. Any additional tofu, I just put on this tiny little plate and I season it for eating during breakfast. Okay, we're gonna fish out the dashi tea bag. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a squeeze. Your water should smell a little bit like um, smoky because the bonito has been smoked, right? So that's the katsu woshi that you're smelling. It should have a bit of a fishy taste to it, but it shouldn't be like mega super unpleasantly fishy. It's just it's a stock, right? So we're gonna be adding to it. Some people do dry this bag, they open it up and then they use it to go on like rice and different toppings. It's kind of like furokake, where you kind of spread it on and make an onigiri. There are so many little gadgets and gizmos that you can use for making miso soup. This is the one that I like. I showed you before where you could use your ladle and you could use your spoon and you kind of mix up the miso. Well, this is made just for that. So you put the miso in, you go in circles like this and it helps like push the miso through and even it out. It's a multitasker. You can muddle cocktails and you can use it as a mini strainer. It's perfect. Clips into the side of the pot. 
Now in this case, I'm going to be using two different kinds of miso. I'm gonna be using the lighter yellow one that I used earlier, and I'm using this darker, more savory one. I'm just gonna mix the two. I do about a tablespoon and a half per bowl, is how I think of it in my mind. So everyone's getting like one and a bit. Again, it all depends on the amount of salt and sweetness that's in your miso paste. Two. I feel like I should just probably finish this off. What do you think, you guys? Come on. I need more miso paste. Anyone that recommends any, please let me know. Or if you are a miso paste worker who works for a miso paste factory, send it on over. I'd love to feature it in my video. All those miso paste factory workers that are watching right now. I'm just gonna add a little bit because it's quite strong. I feel like you could really prank somebody with this by being like, have some delicious chocolate ice cream or frosting. Oh my God, that would be mean. Get your muddle on. So this whole time I have the miso soup at low temperature because you don't want it to come to a boil. If it comes to a boil, the miso, all the like bacteria in it and stuff, you can kind of murder it. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I heard. So I'm sticking to that. It's really good for you, right? It's got like fermented stuff and it's got probably probiotics and all that other jazz. It's really good for your gut. I find that starting out with a Japanese breakfast, I always feel really good and really regular. And these are things you talk about as you get older. Okay, I'm gonna give it a taste and see if I need to add any more. Ooh. I'm gonna add a little bit more of the salty dark red miso, but just a smidge. Just a smidge. Grab your onions and put in as many much as you like. As many much as you like. That's right, as many much as you like. Grammatically correct, I believe. How much would you like? As many much as you'd like. That's how much I would like. As many, much, is it, this is gonna plague me. Feels like it sounds right to me, but maybe I've just been living overseas for too long. Oh no, as many, much as you'd like. Time to write an English textbook and put it in the classrooms. And now for my secret ingredient. They look like kids' marshmallows. All right, I'm gonna kill the heat on my miso soup and I'm just gonna put it on the, the back burner just to sit with a lid on to keep it warm. And then when I'm ready for breakfast, I'm gonna serve it up into my bowl of tofu and it will warm up naturally. Next up, tamagoyaki. This is just a rolled egg omelet. It can be a little bit sweet, it can be a little bit savory. It just depends on how you make it. I'm doing two eggs, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of shoyu, and a little bit of my dashi broth. And then I'm gonna be rolling it all up in this magical little pan. This helps make that little kind of tube space, that little tube shape that you see. You don't have to use this. I've seen Japanese people roll it up just kind of like haphazardly in a normal pan. So this is just convenient for embarrassing you on camera so that everyone can see how much I can't make it. Ah, let's go. It never works when you're on camera, does it? All right, two eggs into the bowl. One and two. Give them a nice little whisk up. I'm adding in two tablespoons of dashi broth. Two. A few drops of shoyu. One, two, three, four, good. And about a teaspoon of sugar. Boop. Give it all a nice whisk up. To the oven. We're gonna lay down a layer of oil. We're gonna pour down the egg really thin. And then as it's cooking, we roll it up and put it onto one side of the pan before adding more oil and another layer. It's quite a quick process. So let's hope I can do it right. 
Now, I personally think that this was too much oil and it's gonna cause all of the egg to like meet in one location. So I'm gonna take a little bit of it off and then I will use it to wipe back on later on. If it's not like luby enough, then your egg's gonna burn and get stuck. But if it's too luby, it's like caused my entire egg to just kind of cluster in one location. Okay, we're gonna see if it's ready by just putting a little bit of egg on. Okay, it is sizzling. Here we go. Why won't this one little area get covered? Why? 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 Okay. Like, like so. That was elegant and beautiful. Now when I add more oil, I wanna make sure that I lift this up as well so that the egg and the oil get underneath. Okay, a little bit more egg. Okay, and we're gonna roll the other way. There it goes. With such grace and such skill. I'm gonna just press this a bit. And some more oil. And some more egg. I think this pan is too hot. I will fix that in a second. It's definitely too hot because I can see that this area is cooking so quickly, it's bubbling. So don't make your pan as hot as I made it. You should not have these big bubbles of egg popping up everywhere. Okay, and last bit. God, pan, way too hot. Way too hot. Oh man. I knew this would happen on camera. I just knew it. Uh, whatever. Still gonna taste good. <laughs> oh, you guys. It's it's so beautiful. Never before have you seen such beauty in a tamagoyaki. Such grace, such charm. Quickly, onto the plate before it overcooks even more. Beep. May that have been a lesson to you about having a pan that's too hot. If it bubbles and sizzles that fast, there's no time for you to get one to attach to the other. So definitely have a lower temperature pan, but lesson learned on camera in front of everyone. With everything ready to go, nothing left but to serve up the rice and to prep my natto and umeboshi, which are my final additions. And I wanna show you a mega cool trick for opening up your natto and not getting your fingers all slimy. It's crazy. I did not invent it, but I love it. Okay, so you got your natto. It comes with usually a tare, like a little sauce on top, and I've got mustard, and this little plastic on top is usually super sticky and super difficult to pull off. But what you're gonna do is, not at the bottom, like not down here where things can drain out, but up in the corner, you're gonna snag a little bit of the plastic and you're gonna just push it through using your chopstick. Like so. And then, here it is on the other side, you're gonna grab it and you're gonna pull it. What? Then I do this at the very end because there's that little like string of knots that's attached to it and shazam, sticky free fingers. Now I'm gonna add in the sauces and when I mix it, there is a hole there, but it's not at the bottom, so it won't actually spill out. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that freaking amazing? Did I just blow every natto lover's mind? I hope so. So natto are fermented soybeans. I feel like all I've said all day long is soybeans. <laughs> this is soybean paste. This is soybean sauce. This is soybean and soybean. A lot of soybean action happening here. 
but it's fermented and there's really amazing probiotics and just tons of healthy bacteria in it. And it looks like the texture of it, I think is what turns people off. It looks kind of scary and off-putting um, because of all the like sliminess of it. But once you mix it in with rice and you eat it with like, let's say a spoon instead of chopsticks, you can kind of do different things to mentally not be as freaked out by it. The taste is great. It just tastes like a little savory bean. You know, there's nothing wrong with the taste. It doesn't even taste slimy in your mouth. It's just the way that it looks, I think is not appealing. So you're gonna give it a nice all together mix up. Okay. Woo, woo. And I'm going to get an umeboshi, which is a vinegar pickled plum. It is the same plums that you have to make umeshu, the drink. It's just been prepared differently. Looks like a shriveled old ball. Let's ladle up our miso soup. Make sure you give it a little bit of stir because the bean sediment will kind of like settle to the bottom. There we go. And I'm gonna add a handful of fresh green onions on top at the very end as well. Boop, choop. Rest time in my ramen bowl. Give it a little gentle fluff. I like to season my rice with a little bit of shio goma, which apparently I need to buy more of. That's just black sesame seeds with little tiny pieces of salt. I like the way it tastes a lot. It just adds a little bit of flavor burst and I gently fluff it in so that the salt kind of dissolves. Not those going in. Oh yeah. And then we boche in the corner. Looks like beans and a weird lump of something. I'm gonna pop this all on my little carrying tray and then I will meet you for the final reveal at the breakfast table. It's itadakimasu. Time to dig in. Okay, how do you eat everything? I like to uh, mix my natto up, my natto, <laughs> saying it like foreigner, my natto into my rice a little bit. It gets all like sticky and gooey and stuff. And then I find it kind of gets de-sticky. I'm gonna just uh, twist a little bit of this off. And I'm gonna grab a piece of nori. This is a toasted nori that has um, like an oyster sauce. So it doesn't taste fishy. And I'm gonna make a little tiny packet like such. Not easy to eat on camera because you gotta just shove it in your mouth unceremoniously. So here I go. Hum. Mm. Mmm, mmm. Got that creamy bean taste, a little savory, a little kick from the mustard that's in it, a little bit salty from the rice, the powder that I put on top. Mmm. Take a little bite of my umeboshi. Super sour, that's how I like mine. Two bite! Woo! It is such a sour umeboshi, you don't even know. I'm gonna balance out all those flavors with a little bit of my sesame miso. Spinach, mmm, it's nutty. It's a little bit sweet. It's a little bit salty. It's almost like when we eat burnt caramel and it has all the combinations. The spinach, you don't really taste that kind of vegetarian, not vegetarian, veggie greenness to it because of the other flavors, but it has that crunch because we didn't overcook it. Tofu with a little bit of shoyu, ginger and green onion. It's had a chance to kind of absorb the sauce a bit. Mmm. Tofu's like a little sponge, absorbs that saltiness. Then you have the ginger, which is like a fresh little punch. I'm gonna have a little bit of egg. My roll turned out okay-ish. I can honestly tell you, I swear, like, I swear little girl, I'm a really good skater. I've made this before and it's not this shit. But what can you do? Mmm, nice. Each layer is so, so, so thin. Because it's so rolled in on itself, I think this could go for a little bit more shoyu. I think my dashi kombu didn't have enough salt in it. So I'll have a little bit of a twist to that recipe. Let's go in for our miso. And this is what I wanted to show you guys. There are these little tiny like wheat stars that you can add. Look at it. They're little tiny stars. They really don't taste like anything. Give it a little bit of a gentle stir. My tofu stayed together because I added in last. Mmm. Mm. Nothing about this tastes fishy, 
but the flavor is really difficult to describe until you've tried it. It's like this smoky, nutty, um, beany taste. It's like a baked beans almost. That's the closest I can get to. If you've ever had like baked beans that have that kind of smoky baked taste to it, it's kind of like that. And then the green onions add this kind of like cut of fresh flavor to everything. I mean, all together, it's a pretty well balanced meal. I've got tons of fermented items and, and I just, I just love it. I hope this encourages you to maybe try out one or maybe two of these side dishes. In the info box, I'm gonna include all the little recipes to these items. If you get a chance to try them, please let me know either in the comment section or on Instagram. Other than that, I'm gonna keep eating before everything gets cold. Everybody keep keeping it cool in the King Kogi Kingdom and I will see you uh, on the airship. King Kogi out. <laughs>